It's time to turn this thing into a working bike. Let's get this done. Today we're gonna to see if we can run this single speed even though we don't have sliding dropouts. To do that, I'm gonna be using First Components Eccentric Bottom Bracket. This is one of the very few options for threaded bottom brackets. So we're gonna see if this works. We're gonna see if this can get us the tension that we need to run this bike single speed. If you're ever wanting to build up your own little bike shop, I've got a link in the description below of my favorite tools that I use. The bottom bracket comes with this tool, which is what we use to tighten it. Basically, it changes where the axle is located in relationship to the bottom bracket. And then you tighten this little machine screw in here when you're ready to tighten it down. Now this takes 24 mil spindles and that's what the XT is. The real question is, is there enough adjustment in there to get a chain tight? Let's throw a wheel back here, see what the chain looks like, and see if we can actually get it tight with that eccentric bottom bracket. Okay, we're just gonna put that on there. It's tightening it. All right, unfortunately, this is not gonna work. There's way too much slop. I'm gonna drop a chain on that. Let me show you. It gets even sloppier. That's the tightest setting. And there's not enough room to take the link out. So, no single speed on this. Well, I could run a tensioner off the derailleur hanger and run the little wheel on here. That's an option. I was hoping this eccentric bottom bracket would work. It doesn't quite work for this. So we're gonna take that off, put a regular bottom bracket on here, and I'll show you my next exciting part we're gonna put on here that you haven't seen before. Got the cassette installed. This goes on an HG driver body. You need to start knowing that stuff when you build up your own wheels. The difference between micro spline, HG, and XD. Pretty much XD's SRAM only. Micro spline is Shimano 12 speed only, and everything else is HG. So Box Prime 9, Micro Shift, Advent X. This is all gonna go on an HG driver. So we got 10 speeds here, 11 to 48 tooth. That's almost eagle range. That's pretty awesome. All right, now we can put the wheel on. And here we've got the Micro Shift Advent X derailleur. Let's make it pretty. There, that's better. Okay, here it is, the Advent X, X for 10. Micro Shift is the brand. This is pretty much an old Shimano clone. I like that it doesn't use Phillips, that it uses Allen's for the limit screws and the B-tension screw. Looks a lot like Shimano's attachment system. This is cool, this is the switch to turn the clutch on and off. On, that doesn't wanna pull out, off. Cool, let's get this on. Now one thing I don't have is a 10 speed chain. This doesn't come with a chain. So I'm gonna have to go get a 10 speed chain. That's looking good though. And then here we have the shifter. We got a nice little rubberized thumb pad there. This only goes forward like SRAM. Feels fine. I wish I had a little hinge on this, but that's not the end of the world. Cool, I'm excited for that. If this works and we can get it reliable and dialed in, I think it's like 160, maybe 170, something like that for the cassette, shifter, and derailleur. It's crazy cheap. And if it works well, this is the perfect place to save money on your bike so you can get something like a really great fork or a great wheel set. That makes a huge difference. Most people can't tell the difference between an NX and an X01 derailleur and cassette apart from weight. So that's a great place to save money on a big build. Boy, this looks just like Shimano. They even use their little plastic screw to get the cable in and out. So I've tried the Ergon SM Enduro Comp saddle. It wasn't quite for me, and this time I'm going for the Ergon SM Pro Men's Saddle. I'm very excited about this. This is a little bit higher end saddle. Hopefully I don't feel the plastic on the inside like I felt on that one. So I'm excited to try this out, see if this is the Ergon saddle for me. Wow, these rails come down quite a bit. I hope that seat's not too tall. That's one thing I'd change. I'd lower these saddle rails because I'm a short person. 
Knowing what I now know, if I had to do it again, I would have put a gloss clear coat on it. The matte clear coat just looks a little bit cloudy and it definitely took the mirror finish away from the silver. That was so cool when that was mirror finish. Now I've ordered a Cane Creek helm for this, but it's not here yet. I'm gonna just throw on this old sector I've got here. This has such a tall stack, barely can fit any spacers under that deer tube. It's already been cut. Oh, it's looking like a bike. Hey, those stickers actually look pretty cool with that. Even though this bike can be run with a 150, and I was running it for 150 for a while, I did that experiment where I ran it with a 120 and I loved it. So I'll probably be somewhere in the 120 to 130 range. Fortunately, the helm is so easy to adjust that I can play around with that. I'm just using some leftover specialized bars on this that I have from another project and a cheap old specialized stem. I'm gonna put a 9.8 stout stem on this once I decide on stem length and bars, but this will get me by for now. These are 800 bars. I like 760s, so I'm gonna trim these down. And this is the best tool for that job. Way better than a hacksaw. You can't do this on carbon, only on aluminum and steel. I haven't found any bars that I love. A lot of people ask me what bars I recommend. My one-ups are okay, but they're not as soft as they claim they are. They don't make a huge difference. I find it to be about the same as a race face next R bar, which is fairly comfortable. All right, here we go. Nice, clean cut, perfectly straight. Now we take this deburring tool that has blades in there and blades in there. We get the burrs off the inside so it doesn't cut through our grip. The pointy part in there. Then we're gonna do the outside with the other side. Puts a nice round little edge on it. And just cause I hate sharp metal anywhere, we're gonna sand it just a little. This is gonna be a great little test mule where I can put a whole bunch of different parts on and try it out. And I love this Banshee. I have missed this since this has been sitting here drying and slowly being built up. I have missed riding this frame. I love this frame. I can't wait to get back out on the trail with it. Part of the reason I've been taking so long on this build is because I wanted to feature these brand new TRP Slate 4 brakes and I couldn't release the video until they were announced to the public. So when I reached out to TRP, I didn't ask for the best of the best of everything. I told them I want a solid trail brake at a good price because that's where most of you are. We don't need to spend a whole bunch of money on brakes that have a 5% better performance. I mean, we'd love to if money was no option, but money is an option and there are some good brakes that are cheaper these days. So they sent me the new Slate T4. This has a whole bunch of upgrades over the old one. It's got a new lever blade. It's got an updated fluid. It's got an updated hose design. I really like the O-ring on the barb there. That's super cool. It's got new pads and updated seals on the master cylinder and the caliper as well. And they didn't change the price. That usually doesn't happen. So these retail at 119, which for a four piston brake, I think that's right in the sweet spot where we want to be for great brakes. So I'm really excited about these Slate T4s. They're not as beefy and powerful as their full on downhill brakes, but I'm curious if this will be enough for a hardtail and for trail bikes. And we'll see how it compares to some of the other brakes out there. We're running an IS to 180 post rotor out here. I run 180s on all my bikes just to keep life simple so I can swap wheels back and forth. And then I run 200s on the front, but I'm gonna run 203s on this because that is the size that TRP uses for their big front ones. I think it's a sharp looking brake. So I love it when brakes have an adjustable hose here. There we go, no crazy weird lines now. So far, I really like everything TRP's done on this brake on the surface. We'll have to see how it rides and what it's like. I love it when they use a bolt here instead of the cotter pin. Okay, good. I really like it when pads can be inserted in and out from the top. That makes life a lot easier. 
Looks like these have some great clearance for levers underneath them. That'll be nice. They don't have the little button that Shimano's have, which is nice. That means you pull the bolt out, it'll just come all the way off. I appreciate that. Let's try the Ergon GA2s on there. I think that looks pretty good with the color of the bike. These are the GA2 fats. They're a little bigger than I like, but the cushion's awesome. All right, next up, let's shorten the hose and bleed the brakes. I love the O-ring on the barb. This is now crushing the olive to make a fluid tight seal. All right, here we're checking clearance. I want to be able to at least turn my bars 90. I could go 180. I just don't want a huge loop of cables up here, but I don't want it too small in case I swap it to another bike either. I do a lot of that. So this is a little $5 housing cutter I got off Amazon. It works great for cutting this stuff. I think everyone should learn to bleed their brakes because usually the time you need it is right before a trip and the shop's closed. I decided to make a last minute change and throw the nuke proof wheels on here instead of those stands. I've already reviewed the stands and I know what they ride like, but I have no clue what these ride like. So it's time. These are more the type of wheels you guys are going to be interested in. 30 mil inner. If you haven't seen my video where I did my first look on those, go check them out. Really high engagement. I actually don't mind the internal routing in the chain stay here because I feel like it keeps it out of the way of the chain and it's easy to do there. It's mainly ex internal brake that drives me crazy. So these bleed just like Shimano's. In fact, I've got a Shimano funnel kit here, just topping these off. They use mineral oil just like Shimano's as well, which is friendlier on the environment, but it does break down a little bit faster in heat and contaminate a little bit easier versus regular dot fluid. But Pro World Cup downhillers are using these, so I'm not worried. I'm excited to try this drivetrain. If we can cut the price of drivetrains down significantly, we can make bikes cheaper. Final touches. Putting the head badge on. Well, the Banshee is finally back together. I can't wait to take it riding. I think this is the one frame that would not look great with tan walls. I normally love the look of tan walls. I don't think it'd work on this one though. I'm super excited. This has been fun stripping this down, painting it, making it mine, making it unique, building it back up with some really interesting parts. I'm excited to try the Advent X. It set up really quick. So it shifts extremely well on the stand. I like the crispness of the shifter better than XT and XTR. It does not have a double push, just a single. Um, and there's not a ton of chain tension. I wonder if there's a way to tighten that up because I wish I had more tension on that clutch. I'm excited for these TRP Slate T4s. Thank you TRP for sending me those. I can feel even on the stand, the new brake pad compound feels awesome. And the Ergon SM Pro saddle is gonna be fun to test out as well. This is super awesome. I wanna thank my partners, 9.8, Orange Seal. I wanna thank the Bike Bondsman for sending me these wheels to test out. I wanna thank Ergon for the saddle and the grips and TRP for sending me these brakes for demo and MicroShift for sending me the Advent X drivetrain to try this out. Orange seal for the sealant in the tires. I've got some great partners that make this channel possible and a huge shout out to my patrons. It's because of you guys that I'm able to make as many of these videos as often as I do. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. It's time to take this on the trail and let you know what I think of the wheels, of the shifter and derailleur, of the saddle and the brakes. I can't wait.